بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Dr. Suhir Nafa Abdelaziz Al-Shaya Assistant to Prof in English Literature, Poetry University of Ambar, College of Education for Humanities, English Department Our lecture today is in Victorian Poetry and especially about the group of pre-Raphaelites and a poem we are going to discuss, a poem called The Birthday by Christina Rossetti. The group of pre raphaelites is emerged at the middle of the 19th century. Their chief purpose was to create a world of beauty through art to contrast the ugliness of contemporary and stylized life. This school originated in England by a group of young poets and painters. The leader of this group was Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who was both a poet and painter. Among the members of this school was his two uh, brother and sister, Christina Rossetti and William Rossetti, and other poets like Frederick Stevens. This group published a magazine called The Germ in their start at the 1848 and 1850. They announced their principles and displayed some of their poetical art in this magazine. As a group, pre raphaelism were responsible of the reappearance of some romantic elements in the Victorian literature. They revived the romantic spirit in their love of nature and also admiration of Middle Ages, worship of beauty, and Keats' love of beauty as an ideal. For example, his, his poems, uh, An Ode to Autumn and Ode to Nightingale. They also cultivated the old Italian poets like Dante and other French, Britain and German Scandinavian poets. pre raphaelites paintings and writings were characterized by simplicity, love of beauty and detail and symbolism. Their poetry is colorful, decorative and beautiful in its form and suggestion of the mystical and remote. These characteristics of Bri Raphaelites are expressed in Christina Georgia Rossetti's poem A Birthday. Christina Georgina Rossetti, born in London 1830 and died in 1894. She is like her two brothers, William and Dante, brought up and grow up in cultured environment. They were surrounded by Italian arts and paintings and literature. She was bilingual in Italian and English. Her first published volume of poetry, Gablin, Market and other poems, she published them as a first great literary success for the Brie Raphaelites in 1862. She was increasingly preoccupied with religious thoughts, so her poetry has a religious flavor that the elements of art, excellence, and of sincere religious faith. The poem per day has two stanzas. Now we are going to listen, firstly, to listen to the poem, then we are going to discuss it. A Birthday by Christina Rossetti My heart is like a singing bird whose nest is in a water chute. My heart is like an apple tree whose bows are bent with thick-set fruit. My heart is like a rainbow shell that paddles in a halcyon sea. My heart is gladder than all these because my love is come to me. 
Raise me a days of silken down, hang it with vair and purple dyes, carve it in doves and pomegranates, and peacocks with a hundred eyes, work it in gold and silver grapes, in leaves and silver fleur de lis, because the birthday of my life is come, my love is come to me. So the theme of the poem, Perday is concerned with natural and spontaneous expression through song or poetry. Poetry here in this poem provides a natural outlet for Rosity's emotions. The tone of the poem is jubilant and happy. Yes, the point of view is the first person with the speaker sharing her feelings about her love and lover. There is no particular gender has been mentioned in the poem. We don't know if she is, if he or she or any other person. The poem talks about the delight of Rosity, who is shown to be very excited for the birthday of her life. Her life is mentioned in the poem to express her excited. Rosity here portrays a beautiful love affair in her day. As a poem, her day has 16 lines divided into two parts. Each part has eight lines. Each stanza has a regular rhyme pattern. The first stanza is descriptive, while the second is written in imperative mood. There is commands. So the first, she makes use of images from nature, like songbird, fruit laden apple tree, and rainbow, for the expression of the depth of her love, in order to celebrate her love's or lover's birthday. At the second, as I said in imperative mood, Rosity demands an elaborate golden throne, curved in wood. She is in fact very joyful to celebrate the birthday of her love and her life. Imagery and symbolism. There are some devices that used by Christina Rosity in the poem. First of these devices is symbolism. Rosity employs comparisons which provide the images describing her feelings about love she feels for the person who has come into her life. The imagery used in the first stanza draws on familiar natural objects that they are from nature. In the first stanza, it can be read in the, in the light of Rosity's knowledge of the Bible. She intertext from the works of literature and the Bible as the later is considered an authentic source told by the creator of the universe. By Bible, I mean the Old and the New Testament. Texts may give various meanings when they are compared to a well-known quotes for previous, from previous texts. By intertextuality, Christina Rosetti used the intertextuality in her poem. Intertextuality refers to interconnection between similar works of literature that reflect and influence an audience's interpretation of the text. In the second verse, the focus is on artificial objects, hand curved and worked by human hands. Various images in the verse demonstrate an awareness of traditional Christian art as well as reflecting and celebrating human creativity. The imagery and symbolism that used in the first stanza provides several similes used by 
the poet to convey the depth of her feelings. The first intertext is a singing bird. Singing to the bird is as natural as her heart breathing. By speaking of her heart in these terms, the speaker indicates that her song forms a natural part of herself and is an overflow of her identity. Also, this image of the singing bird is one which is often used in romantic poetry. William Wordsworth emphasized the importance of expressing natural feelings when he added that it was his intention to create a poetry which was a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. So the singing bird has two meanings to intertext. First intertext with William Wordsworth and the second from the Bible. So the singing bird has intertext with William Wordsworth's definition of a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. The second intertext in the first stanza is a watered shoot. By having a nest in a watered shoot, line number two, the speaker suggests that the sustenance upon which she can live and rest has been provided. The word shoot alludes to the first stages of growth of a plant as it emerges from the ground. By describing a shoot as well watered, the pump conveys ideas of lightness and fruitality. The word shoot has allusion to the first stages of growth of a plant. By making it in a shoot, the singing bird remains in a place of fertility since it is easy to uproot or destroy a shoot. The idea of being watered has a biblical connotations. It intertext with the Old Testament. The believers in Jerusalem are encouraged by God's promise that he will guide them and provide for their needs. We have the third symbol or intertext, an apple tree. The image of the apple tree, whose boughs are bent with thickest fruit, lines three to four, would be familiar sight in an age more in touch with its agricultural roots than today. It recalls the, the imagery in Kate's to autumn. This begins by describing fruit tribe and ready on apple trees. So it is one characteristic of a pre raphaelites As the poem has two intertexts, the first with Keats poem, Otto Autumn, and the second with the human beings on Garden of Eden, which alludes to the Genesis. So the apple tree has two allusions. The first intertext with Kate's or to Autumn, and the second with the proverbs from the Old Testament. It has a religious connotation. Mentioning of apples intertext with the first humans in the Garden of Eden before the fall, where they lived in perfect peace with nature and one another. It is also likely that Rosity is alluding to the biblical concept of the tree of life. The writer of the Old Testament book, Proverbs, declares that those who lay hold of this tree will be pleased. Another intertext which is Rainbow Helsinki. By speaking of her heart as a rainbow shell that Palatsen Helsinki, the speaker provides an image of experience 
The other intertext is with rainbow helicine by speaking of her heart as a rainbow shell in lines number five to six the speaker provides an image of exponent color drifting at ease in tranquil waters according to the bible the image of the rainbow refers to the fulfillment of god's promises when god helped noah to escape the flood which whipped out the nun world. He then set a rainbow in the sky as a promise that never again would such an event occur. It is, it is possible that the speaker perceives that God's promises are being fulfilled in her life and wants to celebrate this. The term Hellasim comes from the Greek myth of bird, so it is another inter intertext with the term helicin comes from the Greek myth of a bird. It is possibly a king fisher. For English readers, the phrase helicin days was associated with ideas of joy, prosperity, and tranquility. The poem's speaker uses the image of Helsinki to indicate the deep comfort and rest she has found. By ending the first verse with the declaration that her heart is gladder than all these, in line number seven, the speaker indicates that descriptions of natural world are incapable of fully expressing her exponent emotional state. Pathetic fallacy. The speaker of a birthday uses a technique of pathetic fallacy when she gives emotions to the apple tree full of fruit and the rainbow shell. This is the treatment of inanimate objects such as trees and houses as if they had human feelings, thoughts, or sensations. So, the aim of the pathetic fallacy was to signify any description of inanimate natural objects that ascribes to them human capabilities, sensations, and emotions. Now, we have the second stanza, which is built upon artificial objects. The tumble, rosy teeth rose on the imagery used in the Old Testament to discuss the tumble, which symbolizes God's presence with his people. For the Jews in the Old Testament, the tumble was the place where they met with God. A birthday mentions verbal hangings, carved fruit and statues of animals which all figure in the descriptions of Suleiman's temple. Another symbol, we have a daze. The word daze in line number nine indicates a race platform. The speaker seems to envisage a structure built in celebration of the return of her love. The sun come down from which it is made are materials of softness and luxury as well as conveying lightness which added to the sense of uplifting that the poem conveys. Days is also word commonly associated with raised part of a church upon which the altar and communion table are placed. So it intertext with the church communion table. Rosity attended a high Anglican church which emphasized the, the significance and symbolism of the structure of the church building art and would have undoubtedly made use of a days. So a days has a great intertext or connection with her religious beliefs and Anglican church. 
another example of symbolism in the second stanza is of royalty and nobility. The imagery of their purple, gold, silver, and fair delays in line number 10 is imagery traditionally associated with royalty and nobility. Then we have fur is an expensive fur obtained from a variety of squirrel with a gray bag and white boy. It was often used in the 13th and 14th centuries as trimming or linging for garments and is associated with her leathering. The dye used to create verbal tones was expensive. It was only available to the rich and therefore became a color associated with royalty. Precious metals are associated with crowns and other regular. The fur delays is heraldic symbol derived from the lily. It was often engraved on the armor of royalty. Another symbol used in the second stanza are the birds. Following the description of the singing bird in the first verse, the second alludes to representation of doves and peacocks on the days. Doves are used in the Bible to represent. Yes, here they are intertext with the Bible. Reconciliation and peace. This arises from the story of Noah, when a dove sent out from the ark returns with an olive leaf in its beak, signifying that the storm flood was over. Also, the Holy Spirit as the baptism of Jesus. The descriptions of peacocks with hundred eyes corresponds to a traditional and mythical understanding of the bird as a symbol of all seeing God. So here it intertext with God, I mean the bird. Now we have Rosetti uses anaphora, which becomes evident with the repetition of my heart is like. This line is repeated in the first stanza and it shows the narrator is not able to express her joy through language. Her joy is inexpressible and cannot be defined in words. Her feelings abound and make her unable to articulate what she wants to. She keeps on searching for a suitable simile for her feelings as a result makes use of the natural symbols that brings about images of happiness and celebrations. Now we reach at the end of the poem and we have Rosetti's intention beyond a birthday, Rosetti's desire to reveal and, and poetically glorify the splendor of the natural world and also by using moral and sacred meanings. She ascribed them through physical symbols and the literary potency of such an attitude can be evidently seen in a birthday which many readers have taken to be entirely secular.